Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to be talking about how I pick stocks when deciding which individual stocks to buy in the stock market. So a couple notes I'll say before we get started. One is that it's always going to be riskier to buy individual stocks than investing in something like index funds. Index funds just being collections of stocks so that there's a lot less risk involved and you have to be actively managing it a lot less. So for me I think uh, at least 95% of all my money invested is in these index funds. I don't have to really worry about it. It's just those 5 or 10% of my money where I'm like, okay, maybe I'll try to play around and see if the models that I'm building are actually correct. So when I was deciding on a strategy for how do I pick individual stocks, there was two big criteria. And this had a lot to do with my lifestyle. Because when you think about people who are day trading stocks, you look on YouTube and you see these videos about how to make 150 or $200 a day. Usually that involves a lot of active trading so you have to be looking out for when the stock does a certain pattern and then you have to log on to your account and buy or sell it and to be honest most individual investors including myself don't really have time to be logging on and managing your investments multiple times a day so my first big criteria was ease of use so something where I could make a decision as you'll see about whether to buy a stock and then I could pretty much just forget about it maybe check it once a day or a couple times a week or something like that but beyond that not too much effort on my part and the second one which is also big is that I wanted the strategy I come up with to be easy to understand now I know this channel is called Ritvik Math and we do a lot of time series models so you might be expecting me to use something like that but honestly I think if you can get a simple model that gives you pretty good results that's going to be far superior to some model that you don't even understand. You built it but you're not sure exactly how it works. So I wanted it to be easy to use and easy to understand. So with that said let me go ahead and explain my strategy to you. All right guys, so let's just get right into it. This method is not that complicated at all and that's part of why I like it, the simplicity part. So I'm gonna to try to explain it to you as simply as possible. But with that said, of course, there are places where you could make improvements and make it more complex. And I'll point some of those out, but this is a pretty good starter method. And personally, it's gotten me some pretty good returns when I've used it. So it starts by basically just picking three parameters. And the first is time frame. So time frame is the period of time that you're expecting to trade and in which you want to achieve your returns. So for the example we'll be looking at today, we're gonna to say it's one month. So the next parameter is called minimum return. This is the minimum amount in terms of percentage of return that I would like to see one month after buying the stock. So let's say for this example, it's gonna be 5%. So, so far the story is that if I buy a stock a month later, I'm hoping that it's gonna go up by about 5%. And the last parameter is maximum volatility because these two by themselves don't tell the entire picture just yet because I could have one stock who is going to go up by 5% on average and another stock that's going to go up by 5% on average. So they're both giving the same average return, but one could be a lot more jumpy or in more official terms volatile than the other. So that basically means that I'm expected to see 5% on the very volatile stock, but I could just as easily see something like negative 2% or 15%. So depending on the level of risk you're willing to take, this is going to be how you set your volatility parameter. So I tend to be a less risky person. So let's go ahead and say that the maximum volatility I'm willing to accept is 3%. So just so that we're clear on all the parameters, the full story, the three parameters you're putting into this model are the time period over which I'm expecting to trade whatever stock I choose, the minimum percentage return I want, and the maximum volatility I'm willing to accept for this percentage of return, okay? So now let's go ahead and look at the method itself for this example stock graph that I've drawn and see if I would or would not invest in the stock. So this is the time series of the price of the stock over a four month period. Now this is one other thing you have to think about is how far back in the past should I consider when using my method? And there's kind of a trade off here. The further back in time you consider, the more data that your simulation has to make a decision. But if you consider data that's way in the past for an individual stock, you may be incorporating patterns that don't really exist anymore. So this is an area where you have to kind of fine tune and make a judgment. For example, we had the coronavirus crisis. You see that about in the beginning of April is when we started to see that economic recovery. So it might not make a ton of sense to incorporate the coronavirus crisis shock into your model because it's not something about an individual company. It's something that happened to the entire economy. So this is something where you have to be a little bit creative. So I've chosen to look over this four month period and we proceed in a very simple way. So we say that for every single day in this time range, we assume that we were to buy the stock. So the first day in this time range is April the 1st. So let's say the stock price there was $100. And then we say that we bought it 
at that price. And then a month later, on May 1st, we sell the stock. And at this point, the price is $110. So we see that in this case, we made a 10% return by buying it on April 1st. And that's where this bottom graph comes in. So this bottom graph tracks your percent return. And then we just repeat this process for every single day in the time range. So then we go to April 2nd and we say, if we were to buy the stock on April 2nd for a little bit more than $100, it seems, and then we sell it a month later on May 2nd, then what is our percentage return? Then we go to April 3rd, April 4th, and so on. We go through the entire time range and each time ask, what's the percent return if I were to buy the stock today and sell it a month later? And we record that on this blue graph below. So you see this blue graph below starts at around 10%, then it dips. The reason it dips is because if I were to buy it in mid-April and then sell it in mid-May, we're encountering this crash, so I get a negative return. But on the other hand, if I were to buy it during the crash and then sell it a month after the crash, I would get a rather positive return. So you see that this is the graph of returns. And by returns, I mean percentage growth in the value of my stock after a month. Okay. And then the last part is really simple. We just compute the average of this blue graph. And let me pause for a second and talk about what that means in real world terms. If I was just a lazy investor who didn't have a ton of time to really be actively tracking things, and I were to randomly buy this stock at any point and then sell it a month later, what is the average percent return I'd be expecting to make? So we take the average of this blue graph and let's say it's 5%. So, so far that matches up with the minimum 5% return that I wanted. So, so far it's looking like, okay, maybe I'll buy this one, but we have to look at the second part of the story, which is the volatility. So if I take the standard deviation of this blue line, that basically is telling me how volatile is this return. Maybe on average, I'm expecting 5% back, but there are of course times where I'm getting negative, times where I'm getting higher than 5%. So what's the volatility or standard deviation? And we find that that is 7%. So now we disqualify the stock from consideration because although it does match up with our minimum return, it doesn't give us less than or equal to 3% volatility, so it's out. And that's how we make a decision based on the very basic method that I use on whether to buy a stock. And the reason I like this method, of course, there's extensions, right? You can look at, is the return generally increasing or decreasing? You can look at lots of other things, but I think this is very easy to understand. I think this is very easy to implement in practice. And in actuality, it's given me pretty decent returns on the stocks that I've chosen. So the last part of the story is that this is for an individual stock. We do this same process for basically every stock in the market or as many stocks as you would like to look at. So we just leave that running and then we pick those with high average return and low deviation or low volatility. And that's basically it. So the last thing we'll do in this video is look at the code, which I'm going to make available online so anybody can use this process with no effort on your part. And we'll see what stocks get predicted as of today. But of course, that's going to change based on when you watch this video. So let's jump over to the code. So this code is fairly simple. The only special library is this pan a data reader library, which you can easily just pip install if you don't have it already. So now here I've shown an example. This is the Disney stock price from April 1st until the end of August. And the method is exactly as we described on the whiteboard. So for every single day in this range, we're going to pretend to buy the stock on that day, and then we're going to sell it four weeks later. So about 28 days or the one month that we were looking at on the whiteboard. And then we just calculate what's the percent return for every single day in this range. And we get this percent return graph down here. So you see that there are times where buying Disney stock would be a pretty good idea. We see that we get pretty high percent returns, but there are also times when we get negative returns or just near zero returns. So we find that on average, we get a 6% return over this time period, but the volatility or standard deviation is 7.7%. So personally, not sure if I would buy this. And then we just repeat this procedure for every single stock in the economy. So this code right here is just looping over every ticker and doing the same analysis as we did with this example, Disney stock. And we find that two tickers are suggested based on our minimum requirement of needing 10% return and the maximum deviation or maximum volatility that I set, which is 7%. So we see the first one is Yandex, which is a internet services company. And the average return over this time period is about 13%. You can see actually that this particular stock never reaches a below zero return in this time range, which is nice. And the deviation or volatility is just around 6%. So this meets our criteria and this may be something that I buy. The other one that gets suggested is Apple, which most people know about. And it gives a similar return, 13.35%, but it gives a higher volatility, a higher deviation of around 6.7%. And that's probably because of this strange little dip that happened right here. 
So those are the only two stocks out of this example list of 304 that were suggested. But of course, based on when you run this code, these are not always going to be the suggested ones, of course, based on the parameters you set for yourself and also based on the number of weeks you set. Here I set them as four, but you might want to have a return in a shorter or longer period of time. So go ahead and play around with this code, see if it works for you. And if nothing else, hopefully this video just helped kind of get your gears turning about how you might decide to trade stocks for yourself. All right, so any comments are welcome below. Please like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see you next time.